The Idaho batholith is an interesting and important part of Idaho's history. Today we are going to tell you everything you need to know about the Idaho batholith. First we will start off by telling you what a batholith is. Next we will tell you where the Idaho batholith is located. After that we will tell you the rock types and the ages of the rocks that make up the Idaho batholith. Then we will tell you a little about the history of the Idaho batholith. Next, we will tell you about some of the structures that form the Idaho batholith. And finally, we will tell you about some of the natural resources and hazards of the Idaho batholith. According to the Encyclopedia Britannica, a batholith is a large body of igneous rock formed beneath the Earth's surface by the intrusion and solidification of magma, with a surface exposure of over 100 square miles. Faulting and contact metamorphosis of the enveloping rock near the batholith are also common. The Idaho batholith covers a large portion of western Idaho, all the way from Canada in the northern part of the state, and runs over 200 miles to the southern portion of the state and spans about 75 miles in width. There are three main lobes that create the batholith. The northern part of the state is the Kinixu lobe. Moving southward to the next lobe, the Bitterroot lobe is the easternmost section of the batholith, and the Atlanta lobe makes up the southernmost section. Most of the Atlanta lobe is located northeast of Boise and can be seen from the Lucky Peak area. The two lobes are separated by the middle Proterozoic Belt Supergroup metamorphic rocks. The Atlanta lobe is older forming 100 to 75 million years ago, while the Bitterroot lobe was formed 85 to 65 million years ago. The Idaho batholith is primarily composed of granite and quartz, but also has grandodiorite, tonalite, hornblende biotite, and gneiss. The igneous rocks were formed during the late Cretaceous compression event about a hundred million years ago. At this time, the Farallon plate was being subducted under the less dense North American plate. The melting and superheating of water was also subducting formed basaltic magma chambers. These chambers rose up through the lithosphere due to differences in buoyancy. The plutons of magma stopped approximately 4 to 25 kilometers below the surface and cooled slowly. This slow cooling is what formed the granites and granodiorites we see today. There were many small magma chambers that all formed one large mass. The different rock types and textures are due to cooling of the magma bodies over different rates and times. These rocks are now exposed at the surface because during isostatic rebound between 65 and 50 million years ago caused erosion of the overlying rock. Nice was formed due to the contact metamorphism along the edges of the batholith.